all the big calls on all the big races. Yes, regular viewers, you know that's time for another Water Shout brought to you by our sponsors, Bet365. If you're new to the show, Dave Orson here. Delighted to be back in the seat somewhere in the capital on a Thursday morning. Yes, everything all weather for you. This weekend, we'll preview five big races coming your way. We've got the champion trainer on the line as well for you. Don't forget, this is a show you watch on YouTube or Twitter. If you're on YouTube, it's like, subscribe, comment and share. Why not comment if you're on Twitter as well? Hashtag, what a shout. Get involved, look out for those clips going out. We've got the best tipsters in the world coming your way. Well, I think a resurgent tipster, we can say, in Paul Keeley, anyway, yeah, can't yeah, we? Don't go overboard, yeah. Oh, listen, this is, my, this is my gig, mate. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I have it a little bit of form. Uh, disappointed with Jimi Hendrix the other day, but... Uh, you always got to put it down on Well, no, no, it's always one... You, you, you know what it's like. It's the horse you really, really fancy gets beat, and then you back a couple of winners elsewhere. Yeah. Like, you know, when you've had but have you kept it going through the week, It's been disappointing. Uh, I haven't done much since. I haven't, in fact, I haven't done anything since. Discipline, Keeley. Uh, you know, man, but I had a good Friday last uh, last week as well. Uh, two winners in the paper and a 20 to 1 third. So, yeah, in a bit of form. So we're rocking and rolling. Hopefully it continues. All right, nick a bit off Pat then, who comes back for uh, <laughs> two weeks in succession. We've got the Grand National coming up next week, Pat, but this week... For those aficionados of the sand out there, it's all weather tastic. Yes, it's a good looking card, isn't it? And uh, surprisingly big fields at Bath, which is great to see. So two good cards on the all weather at Lingfield and Newcastle. Something for all us flat purists, I think. Yeah, all quickly priced up, isn't it? And yep. I guess, the, just before we move on, guys, and tell people what's coming up, uh, this is all established form, isn't it? You know, it's, it, 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 people wait for the draw because we know run styles by now. You know, the front runner who gets 16 of 16 at Lingfield, all of a sudden goes spiked out in the market and stuff like this. How do we play it, Kills? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I, I, you know, it, it depends on whether you follow all weather racing throughout the season. I have to come into it completely fresh because I don't. You know what I mean? So I, spend, I, I have to spend a lot of time looking at it. Like, you know, I mean, I'm probably one of the, one of the few people that was actually quite <laughs> pleased by the smallish fields in Newcastle. Made it a lot easier. <laughs> uh, although I have had a quite good go. A couple of winners and he gets lazy. I have had a, no, I have had a quite good go. A couple of the handicaps at Linkfield um, yeah. tomorrow, funnily enough. So, so yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you, you play it like any other race. We all know that, you know, there, there, there's, there, there's draw biases at Linkfield. Uh, there's yeah. less of one at... Less of one at Newbies, it's just had Newcastle, sorry, the straight track seems fair enough. Believe it or not, there are people out there who don't dig the jump racing scene and they do stick with it. Absolutely, I you know I've known plenty of people who do and yeah. you know, make all weather racing pay. It's, it's not generally for me, but I mean, it's good It's good racing. It's, you know, and yeah. I, I do like good racing, I like competitive racing. Yeah, we don't have a Lord North, wasn't that a wonderful you know, feather in the all weather cap when he went and wanted to buy again? But we do have some representative form. We're never going to have stars at this meeting and whatever we think of it, it's now the fields are set, it's up to us to provide the winners and for you to give us the prices. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the, the great thing about this, uh, certainly Newcastle, there's less imponderables about there. You're not looking at a horse going up in trip or obviously switching from turf to, to all weather. It's all pretty set in stone. So it, it's, dare I say, relatively easy to put them in the correct order in the betting and then just let the market uh, decide which way it wants to go. I'm getting excited about this. Listen, if you want to sign up, basically, to the Racing Post and get him properly involved this weekend, it's Easter weekend. Check this out. Head of the field, then get involved. That offer still stands. All right, don't forget to download the app. More about that later in the show. What is actually coming up for you this weekend? Then, well, we've got Kills, we've got Pat, we've got myself looking at the five big races. We also go and zoom into Mick Appleby's brain. Yes, a seventh all weather championship for Mick and the team up there, and some massive players for you to hear about. Get the inside word on Friday and one for the turf a little later this week. Before those all important, you can't wait for them. The naps. Right, well, it's all weather championship finals day. That means one thing. It's our annual return to go and have a chat with Mick Appleby. Mick, let's have a look where you are at the moment now. You've just told me off air you've been galloping the next five winners from the yard on turf 
at Southwell this morning. Life's good, isn't it? Another seventh championship in the bag. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's great, Mick. And listen, it, it, it can't have looked like it was going to be plain sailing all this winter, can it? Because in December, it looked like George Bowie, who now takes the runner-up spot, might just run away with it. Yeah, exactly. I think we, at uh, Christmas, I think we was 15 behind him. Uh, I think it was, I thought it was going to be an uphill struggle to get in front of him. Yeah, but then, uh, you know, normal order restored for punters out there. And January came along. And it's fair to say, winners were aplenty. Yes, I think we, uh, I think we had 20 winners in January. Um, uh, all of a sudden, the, the horses started running really well. And obviously, we got in front. It's a little bit Instead like of... Man City viewers, isn't it? Who are chasing Arsenal at the minute. It's all a bit weird out there, but don't worry. The class will come to the fore. We're going the Premiership title comes your way. So, Mick, look, again, congratulations. And uh, there have been some really interesting horses along the way. Once again, it seems, Mick, that you've been inheriting horses and improving them no end. We know you're a bit of a master at that now. It always seems to be for the horse, which, horse watchers as well, the Dixon Brothers at Tal. You even gave Oshin Murphy a winner back on his first coveted ride. Yes, we did, yes. Yeah, so that, that was good. How good to have Oshin back, give him his first winner back. Yeah, um, uh, everyone wants to ride for you, Mick, basically. So, um, uh, look, before we look at Friday's runners, Mick, and we talk about the elephant in the room. Are you looking forward to the turf season? I mean, how many of these horses, how easy is it to get these horses that go through the winter to transfer it to turf? Yeah, I mean, we've got quite a few that will go on the turf. I mean, obviously, we'll, we'll freshen quite a few of them up now. They've had a long campaign through the winter. Um, hopefully, we get some dry weather now. We can start turning some of them out in the field and just freshen them up. Um, then hopefully we'll get some new horses at the May sales for the turf. Oh, OK, that's how it works. And that's the modus operandi, Applebee's then. All right, look out for some of these ex-Shadwells <laughs> then, which go over and just need a bit of the Applebee shine. Let's talk about Friday then, yes. Mick. 60 winners then up this week. Uh, at, at, at an awesome haul. We're looking for the 61st. Now, you've got runners at Bath, you've got runners at Musselburgh at the weekend. We might try and give you to eke one of them out before we go, but we want to hone in at Newcastle first, if you don't mind. Now, there is an yeah. elephant in the room here, Mick that despite the fact you've won seven all-weather championships, you've never actually had a winner at one of the championship races. No, no, that's correct. I mean, uh, hoping we can change that tomorrow. Yeah, that's a bit startling, viewers, isn't it? You know, you've had some great chances. We've had some bad Lingfield draws. It's gone up to Newcastle now. Ed Drake went close for you last year. You even ran Anaf at the meeting. We'll get to him a little bit later on. He's been a revelation this winter as well. We start off with Michaela's boy at Newcastle in the 150. Yes, I mean, um, we, we went to France with him last time. The ground had gone very soft and went against us. Um, I mean, it was unfortunate that the French decided to move the race from the all-weather to the turf. Because originally it was supposed to be on the all-weather. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, I mean, it didn't really work out. The ground had gone bottomless. Uh, he hated it. Uh, but he seems in really good order. I mean, it's just a shame the race is not five furlongs. I mean, he's better at five, so, I mean, six does just stretch him. Um, but he's in good order, and he should run a decent race. Yeah, and we'll know that we'll watch out for whatever he does. Whatever Mick runs in this race, it could be the ANAF, you know, of the future and stuff like that. And that's an interesting insight, isn't it? You only expect that in the States, don't you? You know, from the from the sloppy turf to the dirt. So you've got Gub there with that yes. one. So put a line through that. That's quite interesting. <laughs> yes, yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's go to an old favourite then, Mick, because at three o'clock, he didn't fire in the race last year, but I think we can give a couple of excuses to our old friend United Front, who goes in the middle distance championships. Long time since he won, Mick. It is a long time, but he's, he's been running well. I mean, he's been out in Dubai for the winter. Uh, his last two races, he ran really well. Uh, he's, he's come back in really good order. Um, so I expect him to run a big race. That's interesting, isn't it? All right. And, and sort of tactics we know about him, didn't he? I mean, a couple of them have got something to prove. They've got that Lord North form, if you like, from Lingfield coming in. But they need to return to it. He's just simple, isn't it? You know how to ride him and he'll give his all. He's, he, he's a lovely exactly, yes. Yeah, we love them coming back. So uh, that's interesting, isn't it? Let's go, to the, let's go to the Phillies race, Mick, because you've got, where is she? Smiling Sunflower in the 410. And again, 100 to 1 shot for Mick Appleby at Newcastle on this day. Yes, I mean, she, she's overpriced. I mean, she's a filly that works very well at home. Things have just not gone right for her on the all-weather this year. 
Um, but she's in great order, and I think she deserves to be there. Um, I mean, I think she's better than what her rating is. I mean, she does work very well at home. Um, so I think she could run a big race at a big price. Yeah, you've just been experimenting with her trip since that comeback run, really, haven't you? Yes, yeah. Mm, all right. I, think, I mean, New, Newcastle will suit her better than the other all weather tracks. It must be nice to going into a race like that with the pressure's totally off as well, isn't it, I imagine? Yes, yeah. Well, let's heap some pressure on Mick because a lot of the people that will be going to Newcastle on Friday and indeed, you know, picking up your racing post out for a bet will be Anaf then in the sprint. And he has surprised me, Mick. Uh, you know, I watched him a lot last season. I, I know I spoke to you this time last year and you said, have a look out for him. You know, he's a good horse in the making. And he, he, he sort of ran his race at Newcastle last year, didn't he, without I mean, quite looking like winning it. But it's fair to say he's found another jet engine, hasn't he, this winter? He has, yes. I mean, he's improved. I think he's just strengthened up. Uh, I mean, he's not very big. Um, but, I mean, he's as tough as nails. Um, I, say, I think he's, he's strengthened up a lot now, and um, he's now the sort of finished article. Um, and he's a, he's a really nice horse with a big engine. Tactics for him, just getting a nice lead. He's become a really sort of smooth travelling type, hasn't he? Yeah, he is. I mean, he just wants a bit of cover because if um, he does too much if he's in daylight early on. So he'll just, he'll just be covered up and come late. Um, I mean, it's just a shame Ross is not riding. I think Ross is quite good that they can't ride him because he's, a, he's a, got to go to Lingfield. Um, so, but I think we've got a good substitute in James Doyle. Um, I'm sure James will be able to do the job. Yeah, it, could be, it looks like it's going to be a really, really strong book, unsurprisingly, for James Doyle up there. He'll be bidding to get a four-timer then on Anna for you. Right, that's the favourite there. All the pressure in the world for the punters. Let's go down to Lingfield. You've got War in Heaven, Mick, who represents you, one of your first runners there, who contributed massively to your 60 winners total and then just came unstuck last time out. Yeah, I mean, it's been a revelation. Obviously, he wore a big hiking class last time. But you see, I mean, he still ran a decent race. Um, I mean, not for Lingfield will suit him, so I'd expect him to run well. Seems in really good order. Uh, hopefully we get another big run out of him. That are the runners then for Friday on the Tapita and the Poly track. We wish you all the best with that, Mick. Look, I'm sure it's going to just get over the line for you, Shin. I'm sort of teasing you a little bit and we're having a bit of banter, but uh, it's been a great season then for you. I'm sure you'll crown it with a winner. Fingers crossed for Anaf and the Poly yeah, so track. Yes, Listen, but yeah, not to be undone, like this day last year, you're also going to Bath. What do you make of the prize money there, Mick? A lot been said about the boost in prize money and how well Bath have done for this on Friday. You've got a runner there in Fernico. Yes, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it's amazing the prize money they put on there for the sort of class five and six races. Um, I mean, obviously they had, um, I think they had about 150 entries there. Um, so it's, it's good to actually get one in. Um, I mean, hopefully, like she, she'll hopefully run well. Just hope the ground doesn't go too soft. But no, I mean, it's a good incentive than putting that prize money on for the class of races. If you're going to get a sound surface anywhere at this time of the year, Mick, when its heavens are open, it's going to be Bath, isn't it? I think probably. <laughs> so hopefully, you're going to yeah, no, right no, no, normally yes, but I think it's gone pretty soft there. All right, okay. Well, we'll watch that one, and whenever Trainer tries and puts Dave Orton off, you know what happens out there, people. Uh, yeah. Right, Mick, <laughs> off the cuff. Then it's once again great interview for our viewers out there. Thanks for coming on. Can you give us one to follow for the turf? Just something that you think might not have done it this winter or something. I haven't asked Mick, by the way, uh, for this view. This is totally improvised. Mick, take it away. I think King of Bavaria is going to come good. Does he run on Saturday? No. Okay, he was due to run at Musselburgh, wasn't he? <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, he's going to run at Pontefract, I think on Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday. He's Love going it. to run, run, run in the sprint there. Okay, more to come from King of Bavaria. More to come from Mick Appleby over the next couple of years, no doubt. Mick, once again, this is your day here on What A Shout. We'll have you back next year, please, in this studio, man. Thanks for coming on. You're always so willing. Great talker. We yeah. wish you and the team all the very best. And congrats once again from all of us here at the Racing Post. OK, thank you very much. Well, now, great to hear from Mick then. And uh, you just know that he's going to get that winner over the line, don't you? No, I've called it out. It was actually you that mentioned that to me in the week, Pat, wasn't it? You said, 
we'll whisper it quietly, I don't think Mick's had a winner on Championships Day. Yeah, and I was thinking, rather you tell him that than me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, absolutely. He took it well. He, you know, he's a good character, Mick, isn't he? <coughs> right, let's get on with the races, shall we, Pat? Let's go for the five that we've picked out. Some absolute beauty, starting with the 225. It's the marathon. Yeah, and uh, Berkshire Rocco is favourite. I think deservedly so on balance. Probably got just about the best level of form. Has won over the trip. Andrew Bald and Asheen Murphy, they're going great guns at the moment. So probably a worthy favourite, but he's a six-year-old. He's not necessarily improving. That being said, you've got a nine-year-old and two ten-year-olds in the race as well. So it's a pretty much a set market, really. Um, the second and third favourites are earlier, the Cotswolds and Fleurman. There wouldn't be much between them on the form when they met a couple of months ago, so they'll be close. There's two interesting runners, really, if Berkshire Rocco doesn't float your boat round about the 9-4. to four. Baron Boyme of David O'Mara is a horse that's improving with each run. I think when he joined the stable, he was rated 67. He's now rated 91, so a £24 improvement. And he's probably still got more to come, so he's very much in the equation. But he's going from Class 6s to Class 3s, now trying to win a Class 2. So life gets that little bit harder. My eye is drawn to a speculative one right at the bottom, Knowlton Cross of Hugo Palmer. Ooh. And it, that is a horse this year seems to have improved five pound with each run. So he needs to improve another five pound this time around on official ratings to get there. But he could do. And the reason why he could do it is all, he's now got no form beyond a mile and a half. This is his first run at two. I've watched his last run and he was galloping out strongly to the line. Now, it's easy to think, well, you know, how far would he, uh, you know, and all that. Was he beating horses that were easing down and so forth? But he wasn't stopping. And I just think if Hugo can get an extra five pound and a couple more pound out of him, he's got that unexposed profile, James Doyle aboard. I'd rather be each way him at six than Berkshire Rocco at nine to four. Okay, Pat, thanks. I'd wager that all of this field you've tipped at some point. <laughs> And can I bring something up from last week? And I gave you a WhatsApp, didn't I, on Saturday? I said, can we just start tipping sackable offences? Oh, uh, right, yeah. Vardreen. Um, yeah. Bad Fox's dream. Tails, aye, aye, by the way. What a gamble yeah. that was. Whatever yeah. you think's a right old hound out there, at the moment, this is their moment. Yeah, he put his head down, didn't he? He put his head down. down. Yeah, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. King's Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Tailed off. All right, not everyone. Yeah, <laughs> uh, right, but anyway, anyway that, that was one of the few occasions myself and Pat disagreed last week. And we, we agree again today because I'm, I think no one cross. I like the angle of coming into the race having different form lines and the same horses running against each other yeah. all the time. I mean, you know, Berkshire Rocco, six. You've got Rainbow Dreamer in, in there as ten with yeah. holders, ten. You've got the nine-year-old Earl of Cotswolds in there. They've all been around the block millions of times running against each other. You can say Berkshire Rocco is the one to beat, but not on his second place last time. I think that was I think that was a fair way below form and nothing to be too frightened of. So, yeah, yeah, no, of course, I backed him win only on the grounds that if he doesn't stay, he ain't going to finish in the frame. Uh, but he does he does see his races out really well. He's by Dark Angel. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you, you're talking to someone. He's a Galileo you know, mare. Batash, yeah. Ha yeah, yeah. Harry Angel, Mecca's Angel, Lethal yeah, yeah, Force. Yeah, know. Like, you know what I mean? And here we've got one running over two miles. But yeah. like you said, there is stamina on, on the damn side, and he does seem to stay. I latched onto him early last season. I thought he was really, really promising. I, I, I remember. A good bet on him on a Derby Day That's handicap. That's when it was. And he just didn't show anything at all. Broke slowly, didn't handle the track. Yeah. Bloody, bloody, bloody. I don't think I've ever forgiven him, but because you know, I bought into well, that. This with is you. it. He seems to have grown up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he was a little bit. Uh, you know, I say a bit backward, like you know what I mean, a bit of a slow learner. But he seems to be getting there now. And if and if stamina is his thing, yeah, I can see him being a big player. And James Doyle on. I think if we were doing a leading jockey market at, at, at Newcastle tomorrow, if he wasn't favourite, I'd be I'd be having a good go. Emily, he's set for a very good day. You've got some interesting sorts in here. I mean, withholds form obviously was let down last week, wasn't it? Yeah. Good old withhold. A rainbow dreamer. Great to see him back for another go. The ten-year-old last year's winner out of the Cotswolds. Great story. That was when he won. He could yet be the class. I mean, Barchier Rocco should be fab. He bumped into one at Kempton last time. I fancied that day. That turned out to be out of Tyrone. That's gone down under now. Slight setback for him. He'll probably like this mm. track more. Uh, but I can see the Norton Cross thing, and I'm sorry yeah, to say, just, gents, it's a clean sweep. Oh, no. Wow. wow. It's a clean sweep. Me. Surprises me. Yeah, so jump off that one. Right, let's go to <laughs> Lingfield, shall we? Really interesting <clears throat> card down there, Pat. Big fields, good prize money as well. Yeah. And we're going to a very interesting race here. Yeah, the 240. And Ryan Moore is at Lingfield, so he could have gone Bath, Newcastle. But he's rocked up at Lingfield, primarily, I suppose, to ride this brewing of William Haggis. What's not to love? Three runs, three wins. I don't know how good it is. Mm. Um, he's been given a mark of 89. Uh, significant I, that um, he starts off in a handicap. He's drawn in stall one. 
which is fine if you break well enough. Um, I, I could see the betting public latching onto a William Haggis, three ones by its name, Ryan Moore. This has got, could go off seven of four vibes about it. Now, does that mean he's value? It could be, I don't know. But there's only five pound between the numbers one and 12 on the handicap. You look at a horse like Mulgrave or John McConnell, he'll be popular. Good Dundalk form, five wins from 12. But I, I quite like Dingle here, number 12, uh, Ross Orion. Drawn in three, which is fine. And he won a class four, this is a class three. He won a class four in good style at Newcastle last time. I thought it was a much more wide open race than he made it look. And that was his first run since a wind up. He's gone up six for the run, which is fair enough. And if you work on the basis, horses run better the second time after a wind up, then he might just be the best handicapped outside of brewing. I just wouldn't know, but I imagine the public will make sure he's a short price favourite. There could be a theme brewing here in this race as well, because no. uh, I, I quite like Dingle as well. I thought once he came out in stall three, Ross Ryan on second run off a wind up. I just think he was, a, you know, he's a really solid horse. Uh, he used to be with Annas, didn't he? Yeah, he's quite promising for him as a free. Yeah, he yeah. was. Uh, Murtagh's got one in here as well uh, for the Irish. Um, it might surprise you to hear, but I quite like a Haggis horse. And and uh, <laughs> right. I'm not in the habit I mean, of taking them on too much, to be honest. But this is one I think from, I can see Stall One being a nightmare for this horse. Yes. Well, he's he's um, he looked a bit awkward at Newcastle last time. Now I don't know whether he was just learning on the job. Yeah. That far, and you've got that downhill run, yeah, the camber. Yeah. It just you know it just makes me. I did think to myself when I was watching. I wonder if he'll be suited to Lingfield, and that would, would worry me, especially in a big field. He's never run in a big field. You know what I mean? He has. You know, he, he was well on top of the end last time, and. You know, he could have, you know, three months off, and he, you know, he could have improved tons and, and be miles ahead of the handicapper. But he's eleven to four, and he just looked a bit raw for me, right to me, for me running around Lingfield in a big field against established yeah. handicappers. So I thought I'd go against him. I did uh, like Dingle. I did like Final Vibes for Johnny Murtagh, but Billy Lochnane, obviously the the star mm. of the match. But Billy Lochnane last time out rode Hafit Alain, oh, who no. was an absolute rag here right now. Uh, I backed him. Uh, I know because I backed him. I backed, him, laughing, for the, I backed him for the Lincoln trial. He absolutely flopped out of the stalls, which can be him. Uh, but he never got he never got put in the race, and he was literally you know at the back. He was further behind the the, the first and second at halfway than he did was at the line. Did you put him up in the paper? Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the reason why I'm laughing is because people that get to know kills throughout these shows, which is the beauty of it. And oh, I they always win next you. time out. And yeah. there, is a, there, there is a thing now. Mm. I, I, the one horse mm. I looked at when I was looking on Thursday, mm. I went, I wonder if he's got the balls. Well, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I am going to do it again. Migration, I backed him for the Balmoral Handicap last year. We've all that, read it, Kiel. Yeah, so there you go. We've all so checked it anyway, for you. So, so anyway, but, but, but the point is, he's, he's, he's dropped further down the handicap. He's off, off a mark of 88. Uh, he won here very easily last season, last winter, off a mark of 94. He's run racing post ratings of 97, 98 and 103 in three runs at, at Lingers and he's running off a mark of 88 and he's 20 odd, to, you know, 25 to 1 or whatever it is. So. Yeah. I've got to have a little tickle. I'm and afraid. I'm going to ring a nice bell for you. Sackable offence, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Newcastle. Shall we back up there for the three o'clock? Concentrate on this now. Getting to the meat action, aren't we? Uh, of this wonderful meal that they got up there. And uh, Forrester Dean, uh, uh, the, Nord Lord, uh, the Lord North form. Get it right, Dave. Herovian was ahead of him, of course. But the market thinks that'll be reversed. Yeah, this is uh, take four or five, these two bumping into each other, Forrester Dean. Yes, they were, Herovin was in front of Forrest uh, last time when they were fourth and sixth. I thought quite tellingly though, the time before Forrester Dean did beat Herovian uh, by a length and a quarter on the same terms as today. Forrester Dean that day was nine to two and Herovian was seven to four. So they're stable mates. That would imply that uh, Forrester Dean was the lesser fancy that day. So I think we just tend to forget the last run against the Lord North. It was a, a quite a messy race, really, in the mm. end. And I just think, on balance, I could say Forrester Dean is a narrowly better horse than Herovian. Um, but they haven't got a great history of winning these horses, have they? They're both seven-year-olds. Yes, they, they mix it in better company. I suppose one of the other one of them will win. I was slightly surprised to see Freescape was the highest official rated horse in the race. And he brings uh, all weather form to the table from Ireland at Dundalk. 17 races, six wins. But if I didn't fancy the seven-year-old, I can't really fancy him. And he's as an eight-year-old. So I'd be sort of lukewarm about the race. I'll work on the basis Forrester Dean would be my narrow preference on his overall CV. 
Thanks, Pat. I had a good look at this race, Kills, and I was like, right, let's get, let's take Forest of Dean on, let's take Forest of Dean on, let's not take Forest of Dean on. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a little bit like that. It's, I mean, the thing about Forest of Dean, you can, you know, okay, he's beaten by Herovian at Lingford last time, but he goes particularly well at Newcastle. He does, won there yes. three times. His only defeat was, was uh, against Solid Stone when he was a novice, and Solid Stone was 7-2 to two on, and, he, and, uh, and, you know, he's obviously went on to be a Group 2 winner himself. Uh, and you know, really pushed him that day. He's won very easily the other two times they beat her over, and obviously two starts ago. So I'd say it is interesting that a horse uh, officially rated six pound higher than or five pound higher than him is 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 more than twice the price in in, in Freescape. So um, that would interest me. Uh, but I think Forest Ladina probably win. Yes, and again, see it exactly like that, viewers. What do you reckon? Get your comments in below. Is this the good thing of the week? Uh, Forest Dean will take a lot of bidding. I think you can save on Freescape and not go too far wrong. He's got to come back to that all weather form, though. Let's go 335, Pat, up at Newcastle. It's the mile. Yeah, and this is uh, Berkshire Shadow, is the, uh, the hot ticket in this one. He's round about an 11 to 8 chance. And he, he's just a very good class 2 horse, isn't he? Class 1s and group 1s. <laughs> Just find him out a little bit. This is much more his cup of tea. And you go back a year ago, he was fifth in the 2,000 guineas. Now, of the other five runners in the race, would they ever finish fifth in the 2,000 guineas? Probably not. So he's the one to beat, really. On official ratings, he's, he's top rated, of course. Um, and he has got a recent uh, run and win to his name a month ago. He just appeals to me as, a, as like a solid looking option here. Um, of the others in the race, I think San Andreas of Joseph O'Brien has to be considered. Like that, he's a seven year old, he's consistent. Um, he'd have some sort of a chance. I think this is just quite straightforward. I think Bark Shadow is a solid favorite and he's got an awful lot going for him. He's gonna have an awful lot of supporters because Coventry winner, of course, and dance some of the big dances, isn't he, since running classics and things like that and got that that win back that people wanted mm. to see because last year he looked like he might have the yeah. odd temperament well, issue. Well, I mean, he's, he's been keeping better company than this generally, hasn't he? I mean, he was only beating 11 three quarters in the St. James's Palace yeah. while Ascot last year. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? So he's, he's very, very much the one to beat. I do think, you know, for a six-year-old, Chichester seems to be coming into his own uh, uh, over this winter and he absolutely bolted up when he last ran at Newcastle. Uh, okay, that was you know of a you know of a handicap mark in the nineties or whatever, but he actually backed it up with a really really good second last time. Uh, you know, and I think he'll run well. Now my my angle to that would be I may well play the forecast those two Barks of Shadow to beat Chichester because I think he's going forwards. But but if you asked me who's the most likely winner and whether six to four is mm. a reasonable price, I'm going to say yeah, I think it is. It's one of those, isn't it? Because he has got the class <laughs> yeah. to take the races like this out. You've got Lord of the Lodge in there who's going to get on with it. The Wizard of Eyes good horse on his day. San Andreas could not have been more impressive at Dundalk last time. And James Doyle makes you think that Joseph O'Brien thinks there's a bit more to come. He looks overpriced at sevens, but again, I hate to say it, I'm going <laughs> with you. Watch Chelmsford last time. I think Kevin Stott has no idea how he gets beaten at Chelmsford. He's at, got them all covered, and he gets to the front and gets chinned. It, Newcastle is the key with this horse. Kevin Stott, Danny Muscat going head-to-head -head for the Riders' Championship. That will hopefully go to the wire. What a great narrative. I think Kev can get this one over the line. Final race of our previews for you, then. It's the final race at Newcastle. We've heard from Mick Appleby. All systems go for Anaf. Where does he sit with 365 back? Yeah, he's favourite for the race at the moment. He's round about a 3-1 to one chance. Of course, there's not much between him and Diligent Harry on the form book. Diligent Harry, you can forgive him last time he went to France, he ran poorly, so pretend that didn't happen. And there wouldn't be much between them. Anaf, three from three, hugely impressive. Just throw the caveat in there. He has got a history of fluffing his lines at the start, this horse, and it is only six furlongs in an 11 runner race. I know he's five wins from nine on the all weather, it all reads very well. But um, you're back in a horse who's going to be favourite for a race who does have a tendency to miss the break. So you could be one of those, you've got bits to do from halfway onwards. So 3-1, um, I, I could see people latching on to him for sure, but I've just got that start install reservation. Um, Summer Gandit is always popular. Um, he never seems to run a bad race. If he does get beaten, he's, he's only ever beaten five lengths in his races. That being said, he was behind the front two there uh, a couple of weeks ago. But he, he's a horse, you know, if you like your each way angles, he's there. But um, for Dream, one last week, tipped by Keels here. Um, I wasn't at the wedding, but I might come along to the honeymoon, I think, because um, what's not, what's to love? You know, fully fit, has got course and distance winning form here on the all weather. It was easy to dismiss it as a, a heavy ground, bit of a fluky performance last time out, but 
I thought I had the race one a long way out. And uh, Charlie Foes was saying even before Doncaster, I might go Doncaster or I might wait for Newcastle. So it's clearly an option of running it in both. And um, round about five to one, hugely impressive on Saturday. So I'm going to stick with the dream. All right. OK, Kiel. So this must have been interesting for you when you saw the decks on Wednesday come on out and you saw her there, the dream. This was the original sackable offence last week. Uh, you've kept on uh, your job, not yeah, been 45 well, times I mean, yet, is it? You know, uh, I mean, there were you know, obviously sound reasons for fancying her last time. One, she loves soft ground. Two, she was race fit. And I think fitness caught a lot of horses out at Doncaster because the ground was really bad and it just, you know, once she handles it, too, she's hard fit and, uh, and you know, she's probably a little bit flattered by that. Even, uh, even you know, obviously El Caballo was terrible uh, and apparently didn't look that fit and the trainer said he hated the ground but the trainer also said the fast response was nowhere near fit enough and she finished second, uh, beating a fair way. So I'm, I'm going to say that Vadrim is a little bit uh, flattered by that, although you could argue that the market has accepted that as well because she's only third favourite behind, yeah. behind the two all-weather specialists. Holly Doyle jumping on. Yeah, I think uh, I, th I think Anna is the right favourite. He's just very, very consistent, runs really well here, was was second to sense of duty in the in the Chip Chase Group 3 last year. Uh, a couple of winners to his name as well. So I think he's the one to beat. Uh, I was looking at Harry's bar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, He's got a big chance on the best of his all-weather form. It just hasn't come at Newcastle, which sort of put He's me off. quite a classy animal. He yeah, travels he very strongly, very, he? he? doesn't does always produce. On. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't always produce. He probably needs him to go hard, but he just yeah. hasn't quite produced it at Newcastle. It isn't, it isn't the best there. So, uh, again, I think, I'm, I'm, I think I'm edging towards the front of the market. Oh, yeah, because there's this so many characters I'm, This here, is why I'm punting at Linkfield tomorrow. <laughs> 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 well, we're all waiting with bated breath. Do you know what? I looked at this race. It's going to be hard not to side with Anaf at this. I mean... Mm. At that sort of price, you're tempting him by enough, aren't you? And James Doyle gets on again. We spoke to Mick about him. We know he's you know, in a great place. Just needs a bit of cover. He gets that from stall six, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, this is when I like a lot of these are. But every time I keep looking at the race, doesn't this just map up wonderfully well for Summergand? He's flopped in two starts at Newcastle, but that was 2017, 2018. He's a legend, Summergand, isn't yeah. he? And it, it, it just... This just maps up brilliantly for me. He won this when it was at Lingfield two years ago. I've got to have a bit on him. The other horse that's been overlooked by the market because of recent form figures, if you know Exalted Angel, Newcastle is the... He wants this stiff finish now. Second on his last run here in December. That form's nearly good enough to win this. And Carl Burke and Clifford Lee, just from stall 10, they seem to win these races. He could be overpriced, and I think I'm going to put him on top. Okay, good shout. I did have a, I did have a look at him. I was trying to find an outsider. I ended up giving up, to be up, to be honest. But you know, he has got, he has got back form, just not the recent yeah, form. Just really. slightly yeah. misleading form because I would, I would think if knowing Carl, this has been the plan. The right, keep him fit, keep him fit. We haven't got the races at Newcastle. We're going all weather championship final day. There are your tips. There are your winners for the big day. Let us know what you're going with below. Get them in. Right, nap time on Good Friday. We're just laughing off air and Pat said, they do know it's Good Friday and we got people tuning in for this going, where's all the winners? I missed them all. I was like, they are winners indeed. And uh, the other thing off air, we've got 600 horses running on Friday and you two came down the same horse. Who's going to take the honours and have it? Well, let Pat go because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put another one in just in case people want a nice little Good Friday Trixie. So you are a gentleman, gonna... Kills. Pat, take it away. Well, as we say, like the 600 horses running, you're thinking it's impossible. <laughs> We're both going to land on one in a 14 run the handicap. But that's what we've done. It's the 350 at Lingfield. Um, number 13, Obsidian Knight, trained by Terry Kent. It, it was beaten last time. It was a messy race. There was a £7 claimer on it. Uh, tomorrow is, is David Probert on it. Um, it's a bigger field which will suit his running style. He's won a 12-runner race before, so big fields is what he wants. He's a strong traveller. He's very consistent. He's only been nudged up a pound. I can see he's, he's quite well handicapped still. He's 14-runner, so there'll be four places up for grabs here. He just seems that rock-solid horse who isn't just an each-way chance. He's a can-win and is an each-way. And he's round about 8-9-1 to one at the moment. I think that's very fair. So Ooh. Obsidian Knight. There you go, and chivalrous you have been. Who's it going to be next? Totally, well, I totally agree with Obsidian. You know, Obsidian Knight is just like super consistent. Two starts ago, he ran into Zealot, who was winning for the sixth time in seven starts and has gone in again off a six pound iron heart. 
Uh, and last time it was Knowlton Cross who beat him. Don't know, we both like Knowlton Cross for yeah, the stay, mate. We so, all like Knowlton Cross. So we like those lines of form. So yeah, he's got a he's got a massive chance. Uh, and I was going to nap him, but just in case people want to trick you, I got one at a big price as well. Epsom Faithful, three starts ago, ran in a listed race at Lingers and was a length and a half behind Anaf and Diligent Harry. Uh, who are three to one, seven to two favourites yeah. for for the sprint championship, and here, he, here she is running off a mark of eighty seven. What time is it? At kills? twenty to one in the three fifteen, three fifteen at Lingers, uh, and I just think he's got a big chance. Now there are negatives with him. He's run twice since, so, so she she's run twice since and been last both times. Pat Feelings horse. Uh, Pat Feelings horse, yeah. Uh, now the jockey after the after the, the next run said it probably came too soon. All right. So what did they do? They ran him seven, went her seven days later, over five furlongs, which she hadn't run on since her debut four years ago, uh, and she finished last again. That was in listed company as well. All right. But the handicapper who ignored the big run uh, in the listed race because she was 100 to one has relented and dropped her three pound. Uh, he's put first time cheek pieces on. She, you know, she won four draw? out. She won four out of seven. I don't, I don't worry about the draw. I really don't. She's installed at. Well, I'm she's curious. In, she's installed awesome. eleven. Uh, uh, <laughs> she's installed eleven. Uh, she is handicapped to go very, very close. And twenty to one shot. First time cheek pieces. Mister Phelan, local trainer. Bang. You've just ensured she won't be going off anywhere near that price. And uh, don't tell me that was next best, was it? Was it? Well, you'll never believe it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's, let's, if you're thinking about a treble or a Trixie, look, you can't go wrong with Forrester Dean in the three o'clock. Uh, that North, Lord North form, it's there, isn't it? He'll reverse it with Herovian, I think. This is his track. Big day for James Doyle. There you go. Your weekend naps. Well, sadly, that's all we've got time for on this Good Friday edition of What A Shout. Don't get caught out. All the form is there for you. Enjoy studying, you all-weather fans. We will be back next Friday, ain't we week, to give you our pin stickers annual guide to the Grand National. Fear not, you Johns fans will be coming back with a vengeance for the universe's greatest race at Aintree. Cannot wait for that. Don't forget, of course, if you haven't downloaded the Racing Post app, why not? <laughs> They're still going on, these two, about the fact that they managed to pick out of a hat of City and Night out of all the horses running on Friday. It's going to be Listen, off, isn't it? We've had loads of fun, guys. Thanks for joining us again. Kills, always a pleasure. <laughs> Pat, fantastic to have you yeah, down. Really good. Yeah. Really, really good fun. Did enjoy it. I have just found out that Good Show has squeezed in as the last one in the Whirlpool Queen's Cup. At Musselburgh. At Musselburgh on Saturday in the 3.55. I really fancy him now. You're an absolute pro. Is anyone that has missed the show? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to watch to the end. You've got to watch all the adverts. Yeah. You, you might just get another one you later on. Exactly. And go back to Mick. He gave us one on Pontefract <laughs> on Tuesday as well. Thanks to Mick Appleby then. We do wish them all the very best of luck as well. Thanks to you for watching. Uh, this has been What A Shout. Don't forget, gamble responsibly this weekend. Loads of sports out there. Like, subscribe, comment and share. This has been Dave Orton. Enjoy the sport.